Now, Dr Hillary's got all the health stories making the news this morning. Now, this here's on the front page, Hills. It's on the front page of the Daily Mail. If you can see, it says, um, why sleeping naked is the key to beating stress. Absolutely. Are you a nocturnal naturist? No, I'm not. I wear far too much. Steve goes bananas. He yeah. said, how can you wear all of that? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like the Amish. You know, I've got so much on. He's bare naked, of course. Yeah. And the most stress-free person I know. So maybe yeah. there's something maybe in it. Maybe there's something in it. What, did, well, what are they saying? Well, well, the scientists are saying that uh, what happens if you sleep naked, particularly with somebody else, you've got skin-to-skin -skin contact which release it releases hormones such as oxytocin. Right. That's the same hormone that women release when they breastfeed. Oh. It's the same hormone that's released in kangaroo care when you bond with your newborn baby. Yeah. So there may be something in that. They say it reduces cortisol, the stress hormone, and that people feel a lot better if they, they sleep. Obviously, it's one factor. But it's, it's cold. It's not the only factor. It's cold. Not this time of year, it isn't. No, I'm always cold. Are, are you always cold? <laughs> I'll have, to have a word with Steve about this. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. No, I've got a nice hot water bottle to cuddle. Excellent. Well, it's an sheet. interesting little study, isn't no, it? No, it is. It is. Look, what about this one? Because this is really... If this is true, this is amazing. Um, the vaccine, it makes the front page of the Times. We've been vaccinating um, girls aged um, 12 to 13 That's in right. this country I since I remember 2000... Rosie was one of the first ones. Yeah, yeah since 2008. Rosie. And it's really successful. Across 14 Amazing. countries, they've reduced the rates of precancerous cells by 51%. Wow. All right, in Great. the younger age group and 31% in, in, in older age groups. But that's a, that's a fantastic success story. And if we continue to have high rates of vaccination against the HPV um, uh, virus, which causes so many of the yes. cervical cancers, and we start to vaccinate boys, we could eliminate this disease completely in the years to come. That's, so that's really good news. That is amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Now, look, our pal Ulrika. Yeah. Ulrika Johnson has been talking about she loves her dogs. She does. She's always posting pictures of her doggies. Absolutely. But she says they actually saved her yeah. when she was struggling. Well, Ulrika, of course, was weather presenter when I was at TVAM. I know. And, uh, you know, she's, she's godmother to, to my daughter, Sammy. Ah. So I've known Ulrika for years. Now, sure. in, during her divorce with her third husband, she's gone on record as saying that her dogs saved her from her depression. Mm. And there's no doubt that, that, you know, companion therapy, pet therapy, can work wonders for all sorts of conditions, including yes. depression. There's no conflict with, with an animal that you love. There's plenty of loyalty. Absolutely. They encourage you to get out and about on what oh, unconditional no. love. And we've, we've shown that stroking animals, if you take uh, uh, pets into hospital wards for, for people sure. with dementia or yes. young people, young children, Blood pressure reduces, people feel less anxious, they laugh more. Mm. So there, there is it's a benefit. Like and it can be a dog, it can be a cat, it can be a hamster, it can be a bird. So and many the, And it's that thing of you taking care of something. Yeah, I remember when, when we brought Angus into, it, into us, a care home, you know, when it was, mm. um, it, mm. was, it was amazing. And every one of those old people just lit up. Yeah. They just lit up and they just were... And, and it's just wonderful. It's, it's a, the power, it's the power of pets. And for people with autism, animals. people with PTSD, wonderful. Right, we're all for that. Paddy McGuinness has been talking very openly yes. uh, about his vasectomy. <laughs> yes. Good on him. I think that's a good no, thing to talk about. Um, yeah, so we think, why not? No, absolutely. He's been very honest on social media about his uh, his chop. Um, and one of the things that you know he said was, I was actually quite surprised how easy it was. It took good, 15 minutes. Uh, it was done under local anaesthetic. Didn't feel a thing. Really very straightforward. And a lot of guys don't know this. And it may be one of the reasons why rates of vasectomy have gone down about 64% oh, in the last 10 yeah. years. Yeah. Men think it's something's going to happen to their sex life. It's something's yes. going to affect their masculinity. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, and actually, it's a very successful form of permanent sterilisation mm. for men. No guy should go into this thinking, oh, I can always have it reversed, no. because the reversal rate, success rate, is about 50%. At uh -huh. most, you won't get it done on the NHS either. Right. So if you're going to have it done, when your family's complete and you think, whatever the circumstances in the future, I won't change my mind, it's a very logical and sensible thing to do, because it's much easier than permanent sterilisation in a woman, for example. For sure, exactly. Uh, in your partner. Ex exactly. So Absolutely. I'm glad he's spoken out uh, and, and uh, raised awareness of this. Mm. It's very straightforward and um, it's, it's, a, it's a very good choice amongst lots of others for contraception. Exactly. Now, look, you've got these funny things. Can I just say, mm. you know, it drives me crazy because everybody smokes outside now, which is wonderful, mm -hmm. but when you walk past it, it's horrible. I hate walking past people that vape. Do you? Because you get this horrible, sweet, really quite... It's actually quite nauseating. Oh, you don't like right it? Right in your okay. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand that. <laughs> I, I can don't understand like that. It. Well, San Francisco is yes. the first city in the world, apparently, to have banned... E-cigarettes. Yes. Now, this is bizarre to me because they haven't banned smoking traditional cigarettes, oh. which are 95% more dangerous. Right. They haven't banned uh, marijuana in San Francisco no, or I vaping. Think <laughs> I think you'll find it's obligatory. <laughs> <laughs> or e-cigarettes, which contain marijuana. Ah. Uh, but they've banned these. Now, Do you like these?
these? Do you think these vapes are good? The, what's good about these is that doctors and, and cancer charities all agree that this is 95% safer right. than okay. traditional well, than smoking tobacco. That's yes, they thing. contain nicotine. Of course Most do, of yeah. them do. And nicotine is addictive, but it's not harmful in the same way that tobacco smoke is. Right. And what does, you know, San Francisco authorities have said, we prefer uh, to do this because we don't know how safe e-cigarettes are. And we, we don't want people to use it as a conduit to smoking tobacco. Right. Actually, all the, all the evidence is the reverse happens. Yeah, people are, that actually people are giving up smoking to use and these. taking to these, which is bound to be safer, I think. So it's a bizarre decision Doesn't that they've made. Doesn't it weird? Mm. I know, but I wonder if that'll, that'll go elsewhere. We'll see. We'll see. Well, we'll thank see. you.